Hey guys, what's up? Filippo here. Today we're going to see at all the advantages and the perks of using a second RGB input inside your node tree, inside your timeline, when to use it and why using it. If you're following me on Instagram, you will be seeing pretty frequently that I'm using this second input for my node trees. So why that? So if you are working normally on not so big project with not so many cuts, I might say something around 30, uh, 40, 50 cuts, you might be working uh, screen referred as I am right now and you want manage color spaces directly from the color management inside DaVinci Resolve. So you want to be color managed, you'll be screen referred with DaVinci iRGB. Right now I am, by the way, in Rec 709, my delivery is in Rec 709 and these two serial that I created are just dedicated to quick offset and detail correction that I made for making my image ready to go, okay? So if I'm gonna make a quick selection or something accurate inside this with my qualifier or whatever I'll be using to select specific colors, you will notice that this selection will be pretty broad, will be pretty inaccurate because by uh, being inside a logarithmic color space that is not being converted yet, uh, DaVinci obviously will be picking tons of data. So by doing this, I will be um, obviously needing a second input with a Rec. 709 conversion. So I'll be creating uh, another corrector. And with this corrector, I might just copy my color space transform, my ODT inside there, and it will become my Rec. 709 IDT. So by doing this, I will have an IDT that actually it's not corrected, so I just want to create two more serial here. So let me just make something like this. And I want to manually copy this two, one, two. And as you can see from the previews, these two are just identical. So I'm just gonna rename this ODT and I'm gonna take this three, create a compound node and just rename this IDT. Okay, so I just want to take this, then create a serial node. And as you can see, right now being our X709 uh, color space on this input, and again, I'm not outputting this with my RGB data, I'm just using this for this selection. I'm gonna select my yellows right here, and you can see that my selection will be really, really good. So I'm gonna clean that up just a bit and let you understand why I'm doing this. So now that I have my yellow selection, I wanna drag the selected area inside my main pipeline. So I'm gonna drag this selection here and you will notice that I have a still same selection by remaining up here inside a logarithmic color space. So in this way, I will use the second input just for the selection and I can create just more correctors and I can dedicate these correctors to different colors or different areas. And this is a really great method if you're working even with uh, pre or post uh, groups and you just need to make a specific selection of colors. Right now I'll be really quick uh, quick for this, by the way, that's like a few more colors, so I'm gonna select some greens here in a really simple way. I'm gonna take even the darker areas, i clean that up really quickly just to let you understand this. I'm gonna drag my greens here, and maybe I want my blues from the sky. And from, by the way, the water of the pool, that might be a bit on the aceleration or maybe on a higher luminance, yellower luminance. Taking a bit of mountain, but it's good, it's okay. So taking this selection too, you know, it a bit. I'm gonna drag this here. 
and maybe I'll need also the the roof from these houses this this reds from the roof by the way same thing gonna select this let's play a bit with with the saturation with the luminance and with this selection too I'm gonna drag this data right here so by doing this now I have my selective color on the logarithmic space I can just work with them just by saturating a bit of them desaturating some part of them or just taking these yellow and translating them more on a greeny side like this before and after and taking these blues and by opening my vector scope I just want to crank them up a bit with the saturation just a touch and then those reds I want to saturate them a bit too really carefully and that's great and I think that I want to do is create more pearl and just shape a bit more of my image so I'm gonna create a circle right here I'm gonna wide this up a bit by the way I'm doing all this with my trackpad just to let you see what I am doing right here guys but and normally I'm doing this with mini panel it will be way faster I want this opposite selection so just take a look at this corrector right here I want this all opposite selection and I want to exclude also with this gradient the sky so I'm gonna point at the sky and invert it and just cranking down this so I got just this all selection I want to create kind of a vignetting effect and I want it softer for sure on both sides and just make it softer from here okay then I want to carry this here and just now maybe let me let me just make a brand new selection for this one. Let me just work. Let me just work on a main igniting from the center like this. By working with layers, guys, you are enhancing part of the image one by one, and you're adding with the parallel method this kind of dodge and burning this kind of free lighting and it's really cool it's really great to do this so like this and I want to take whatever I'm doing here and again yeah so let's take the inverted part of whatever I've done here inverted with a note key and just crank up the gain a bit from the center yeah a bit more details a bit more meets and details here and a bit more details from here just a touch so with my dodge and burning right here I reshape the cinematography and with my selection here I take an extra look at my whole colors so again here I can make maybe a few more tweaks I can wide this up a bit even more open this up a bit okay and it's been cut off from the sky so it's good really simple way really simple method but as you can see we're just reshaping our image in a really great way so again if you got a Rex 9 a P3 whatever you will have delivery it will be good, you know, creating this ITT and using it just for selection, just for specific selection. So something like this is good for, you know, uh, I might say few commercial project or different project that might need this on the pre-group. And by the way, 
I won't be using this a lot on my pipeline. I, I, I use this just when I don't have too many cuts and I just can focus on specific colors where the DP and all the crew work well with lights and with color directly on set. But I might say that this thing might always be done with curves, with U versus duration, U versus luminance. But sometimes you just need specific selection and you will need this specific methods on your note tree. So yeah, here it is. Here you have it. Hope it helped you achieve a really great result. And if you're still spending hours around the web searching for the life-changing tutorial, be known that the only thing you need to learn is how to craft a methodical and properly craft working path. I made two color grading masks, one thing for beginner and one for expert colorists. In these two masks, I compressed 10 years of on-ground experience into more than 25 hours of video content. If you want to level up your color grading skills, check the link below. Until the next time, be brave and make it better.